So a few weeks ago, I received this picture from someone up in Norway, a fan that follows my videos named Martin. And he told me this was a coffee he found at a market dating back to either the 30s or the 50s. And he said, do you want this? Do you want to try this in a video? Well, of course I said yes. I would love to do that. Do I actually really want to? No, I'm intrigued and a few weeks go by. This comes in the mail. I asked Martin about this coffee. I said, you know, when was it roasted? Who is it roasted by? What are, what's the information you can give me? Well, at first he thought it was either the 30s or the 50s, but it was actually roasted in 1967 by a company started in 1966. Now that company is Magrofa. Now this company was not actually a roaster. They owned a few different companies and I actually have a picture here of what their building looked like. Now I had to do a lot of digging to find anything out about this company, about Bergen at the time, which is where this company was located. Now this company owned a few different kind of roasteries and one was called Red Mill, as you can see in that photo, the Red Mill on top. Now this, this picture I could only find in an old thread, which was all in, all, all in Norwegian, so I had to use Google Translate, but there was a thread of people talking about about the history of the town. Uh, and this thread dates back to 2017. So the pictures I'm sharing from that thread. And there, there were people who were talking about different homes in this photo that maybe their grandparents own who were cobblers or maybe their, uh, you know, their uncle or someone worked in one of these factories. And one of the commenters actually said that she herself worked at that factory, which I thought was just incredibly intriguing. Now on the top, it actually says Magrofa, which seems to be kind of the conglomerate company that owns all of it. Well, this was roasted by that company. I'm not sure if it was Red Mill or if it was some other roaster that they kind of owned. So during that time, you had less traffic through Bergen. So a lot of the businesses kind of moved away. As people began to settle in and home incomes began to increase and population began to increase in the mid 60s, the coffee market essentially doubled. So in about 1965, 1966, there was a greater need for coffee. So this company kind of came along with some of the others at that time to fulfill that need. Now this coffee was specifically roasted for the Stav Church. Now this is the oldest church in all of Norway, and it's actually pictured here on the bag. This Stav Church, or Stave Church, is located in Bergen, was actually built somewhere between 1150 and 1200. Most, most of the resources I found said 1180 CE. What is a Stave Church, you might ask? Well, they are made entirely of wood, and, and when I say entirely, I mean even the nails were created using wood. Now over the years, it has been restored in different ways, so I'm not quite sure if that holds up. But what's unique is the outside was pitched in a sort of tar, not from crude oil, but a sort of tar that was made from burning different resources in order to create something to kind of protect that wood. But on top of that, this dark color, this black, they believe to protect the inside of the church from evil spirits, from evil in general. And the doorways of stave churches generally were very narrow, narrow enough for just one person person to enter so that the devil could not accompany you by your side. So there's a lot of incredible, uh, incredibly interesting kind of uh, history behind these types of churches. So this coffee roasted in 1967 was created for weekend coffee for the church to serve during service. Now, I was talking to Martin and was asking him how he thought they may have brewed it, and he's not quite sure. So today, I'm going to punish myself, and I'm going to brew this in two ways. I'm going to brew using the Kono Dripper, which this, the, the, the design was finalized in the late 60s, so contemporaneous with what was going on here in Norway, uh, just on the other side of the world in Japan. So this, which was launched in the early 70s, the design was finished along the same time this would have been roasted. And then this is the Cremina 67. So the design comes from 1967, the same year this was roasted. This exact model is the 19 is from 1973, but I thought it was a nice kind of, you know, we're kind of staying in the same area of time. So I'll brew up a cup here and we'll brew an espresso and we'll see kind of what this is about. But first, we shall open this bag of coffee that for 50, Six years has not been opened. Whew. Well, that's that's a little terrifying. It's not sealed. 
Here we go. I'm not going to lie, I thought it was going to be just rancid oil, but it's not. I can, there's actually still chaff in a lot of the beans. I'm a, I'm a little shocked. The smell is pungent. It's like uh, old fudge and old marshmallows that have been sitting outside and rotting for about seven days in a pretty humid uh, temperate zone. Um, this is about to just fall off, it seems. Uh, why do I keep smelling it? I don't know, because that is actually, you know that you know what's going on. On the side, it, it says it's a fourth of a kilogram. Maybe we'll just weigh it real quick. That's 278, so uh, with the bag, yeah, that's about right, nice. It's java bean, that's really unique. So maybe, maybe there's a little hope with this after all. Maybe it'll have a little bit of flavor. Javas tend to be kind of punchy and intense. It actually doesn't look bad. Wow, I'm actually super shocked. Look at that. That is really not bad. There's still chaff intact, which means they didn't go like incredibly dark. Of course, there is some discoloration, but in, in all reality, it's not bad. There's you know, some burnt, there's some burnt ones that may have been in the roaster too long, some Quakers, some shells. But wow, that's really not that bad. You know, I shouldn't be surprised. I intentionally rested this for 56 years because it's a Nordic coffee. And Nordic coffees need a lot of time to rest. They've always, they, they're the OGs with light roast. Nordic coffee, that's the beginning of light roasted coffees. They just, they knew what they were doing back in the 60s. Look, I mean, look how light that is. That is shocking. Oh my lanta. Oh my lanta. That is very shocking. Okay, well, um, I think it's now properly rested. We've rested it 56 years. I think it's okay to go ahead and drink it. I still have some um, of my Nordic coffee here that I'm still resting for a few weeks, but maybe, uh, maybe I need to change up plan and rest over 60 years or 50 years, half a century, in order to get the best flavor profile. Anyway, uh, enough talking. Let's get to brewing and get to tasting. So I'm going to be grinding with the Easy Press OZP6 because, well, I want to do my tongue at least a little bit of a favor and grind with a nice hand grinder. So I'm not even going to like try to do something old. I'm already, we're just doing it. Let's lay out 15 grams. Let's do this. Grind setting, five and a half. That sounds good to me. It's kind of soft and a little, little bit of like mushy. I'm shocked at the amount of chaff in here. Now, I purposely ground really coarsely because how old this is, I'm, uh, I'm not really wanting to push extraction very much. So, um, yeah. I don't think we need much blooming. Uh, I don't see much carbon dioxide leaving, so. It's a little foam. I did a really fast brew time because I'm, I'm trying to be a little kind to myself. Now for espresso, I'm really gonna make sure that I'm treating myself, okay? And I'm using the HG2. I want this to make as little sense as possible. 14 grams. Is that what's in? Wish me luck. Yo ho, never shall we die. I'm so sorry. I'm talking to my grinder, not you. That took a while to grind, actually. That's weird. It's so gummy. It's, it's like gummy. Well, the shot's about to start. The original one and one. So I've brewed a Kono and an espresso. And the smell is just fantastic. I'm hoping that the the that the flavor town that I'm gonna be going to has a, a, an entrance so narrow that the devil cannot come beside me because this is gonna this is gonna take a lot. <sighs> Alright, I hope this is dark enough to abstain from evil spirits. Oh my God, it's, it's okay. It smells like river water. That's what it is. It smells like iodine and river water. Um, oh my God. Uh. 
Why am I stirring? This is the Daddy Hoff spoon, and I guarantee you the only reason Martin reached out to me with this idea is because that vile man tasted old coffee. Get out of here, Daddy Hoff. I'm not happy with you today. Oh, is vile. Okay, well, bon appetit, down the hatch. Oh, the aftertaste is... Oh, 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 oh. I'm, I'm getting chills. I'm starting to sweat. This is not a joke. This isn't a drill. I'm gonna get sick. This was a mistake. Ah! Okay, you'll go. You get, you've gotten to watch me. You're gonna come on and taste this. I at least chug the espresso. Come sip it and give me the dang camera. No. Come sip it! No, sip it! <laughs> Well, but, um, yeah, it's like an hospital, it smells like an hospital. <laughs> Payback! <laughs> Don't you spit that out! This camera's <laughs> lagging! There we go. Okay, honestly, it tastes like, it tastes like iodine, it tastes like river water, actual honest to goodness, there's a type of tea that is supposed to take like, taste like river water. And if you know what that one is, you know, put it below. I've had it before and it was not great, but it was, it, it's like that, but even more musty. Um, so think if someone took a tea cake of that, whatever it was, someone's gonna say it below, and they put it in their grandparents' attic for 60 years. Like you're in an abandoned hospital. It is, um, it's got like a medicinal, not really medicinal, no, because you're gonna think cough syrup and it's not like that at all. It uh, is, 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 it's, um, uh, I mean, there is like a, a bitterness that I guess you could describe as like a, a cacao, but, um, and that's why I said it was like fudge chocolate earlier on the smell. It's like old, like, um, like an old nasty fudge. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, we're getting a divorce. <laughs> okay, I got some tartness on that. There's a little, almost like a little brandy going on. There's almost like a little brandy. Um, yeah, the acidity kind of comes out a little bit more there. Or like a cognac, like a really cheap, like a cognac kind of thing. But that's about all you're gonna get from me. I, I need to, it's like my tongue is numb and I'm, I'm sweating. Um, okay, well, that's, um, that's about it for drinking coffee from the 60s. Um, thank you, Martin for putting my mouth through hell. And um, thank you to everyone for watching. And I hope that you don't have to experience this. And I hope that my um, tasting of it was sufficient for your curiosity on, because uh, I know a lot of us ask the question, what does coffee from 1967 taste like? Well, now you know, I'm, I'm feeling very jittery. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and end it because um, I need to go brush my teeth and drink a lot of water. But thank you for watching. I hope that you brew something tasty today to make up for this. <sighs> And cheers. That is so bad.